Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have an older American car, 2002 Buick LeSabre with the legendary 3800 V6. It's got 210,000 miles on the clock and it drove here about four hours away. Customer complaint is, uh, usually on a hot start, it'll stall out. Or when you put it in park when it's warm, it'll stall out. So sounds like maybe a dirty throttle body. He mentioned that he cleaned the idle air control valve, but um, he didn't clean the throttle body just yet. Uh, no trouble codes stored at the moment, so let's look at some live data and see uh, if we can fix this thing up. No parts required. Okay, so I have some basic data pulled up. Engine temp, oxygen sensors, idle air control valve. That's very key uh, for you know this diagnosis. So at a hot idle, we expect the IAC counts to be, oh, maybe 30. If they're elevated, that means the throttle body bore is clogged up and the IAC has to open more than, um, you know, than it should to keep the idle up. Map sensor, fuel trim, throttle position sensor, Let's fire it up. Okay, kind of a long crank time, and then it comes to life. I'm just gonna let it stabilize here. We'll see what the uh, idle air control valve does. And I should also probably plot the RPMs. That that's kind of important. What's coming down? About 40 counts. Alright, so engine speed's at 750 RPM. IAC's down to 21. That's actually pretty good. It uh, indicates to me that the throttle body is not dirty. Fuel trims, about minus 7, minus 12. I heard the little RPM change, and now we're back to zero. I'm gonna raise the throttle a little bit. Okay, no big deal. Pretty stable. Mass airflow 3.8 grams per second on the money. Oxygen sensors are switching just fine. So everything looks pretty good. Let's shut it down and restart it right away. So IAC is at 100. Fired right up. Now it's going to drop and reduce the idle speed. No problems at all. So, in this case, for a long crank time after a hot soak, we're going to be looking at is there something causing fumes to build up in the intake manifold. Either a purge valve that's slightly stuck open, an injector that might be just dripping very slightly, filling the intake with fumes, something along those lines. EGR valve I'm not too concerned about. You know, it would idle a lot worse if the EGR valve was stuck open. And that would affect instance, you know, it wouldn't take 10 minutes of hot soak to have that problem appear. So let's pull in the shop, check if the purge valve is sealing, and go from there. Okay, I'm, I just saw a dip in the fuel trims and the car kind of almost stumbled and surged. We were down to minus 15, minus 17. Now we're back to normal. Hmm. Let's just keep idling it here. You know, right now everything's fine, it's smooth. But right here, it really wasn't happy. You saw the dip in the fuel trims, minus 20, and then went down to minus 15. It stumbled, then came back. While we're here looking at scan data, another one of the customer complaints was the air conditioning. 
the compressor doesn't kick on the clutch. He said he manually can energize it, the clutch engages, it blows, you know, cold, but the car doesn't turn it on for some reason. So, on uh, live scan data here, if we say, you know, normal AC, we says request, request signal yes, air conditioning AC relay command on. So it's trying to turn on this relay, but the pressure sensor is not changing, and for some reason the clutch did not kick on. So we'll uh, attack that later once we figure out this um, starting stalling problem. All right, so under the hood, we've got the beauty cover off, and let's uh, locate some components. There's our fuel pressure regulator. I actually want to check if, uh-oh, see that drop of gas right there? That's it, we're done. Fuel pressure regulator's leaking, so it's sucking in air. The diaphragm is blown, so it's sucking in fuel into the throttle body and into the intake manifold and create, creating uh, fumes in there. So actually that was uh, a little too easy. Liquid gas on this side of the fuel pressure regulator. Um, that's it. I mean, we could check if the purge solenoid is holding. I'm sure it's fine. So this is the vacuum port, and this will be our... No, this is the vacuum port, and this is the line that comes from the charcoal canister. Now, let's see here. Let's get this off. So let me just start it up with the solenoid unplugged. Feel for vacuum right there. Solenoid is perfectly fine. Let's see if uh, we get a little gas buildup right here. So let's shut it off, wait a few minutes, and then take this line off and see if uh, a little bit's getting by this diaphragm. So let's see what happens to our fuel trims. This is short term, this is long term. If we take this vacuum line off, what should happen? The fuel pressure should rise a little bit, and the trims should start dropping since there will be more fuel injected than uh, if the vacuum line's on. And there's a vacuum leak, so we'll plug off the vacuum leak. Let's see. Not a huge change. If we open up the vacuum leak, the trim should go up a little bit. There you go, 14, 15. It's not a huge vacuum leak, so that's fine. But look at that. It's dribbling gas right now. I'll show the owner. Look, it's, it's spitting uh, raw gas right now. Oh yeah. So we need, we need one of these. Now, I don't know if that's part of the fuel rail. It might be. So basically, when we hook this up, it's going to suck raw gas into the intake manifold and <laughs> completely change the fuel trims there. So that's, uh, that's the main issue with this Buick. Uh, for bonus footage, we can see why the air conditioning relay is not being kicked on. And uh, I think we'll, that'll be the end of the diagnosis. Alrighty, so let's try to do a bi-directional control on this AC relay, and you can see right here, 32 AC clutch, that's this little relay right here. So I want to see if it clicks. Let's uh, enable that, air conditioning relay, command it stay on, off. It's clicking, on, off. Well that's a good sign. We unplug it, on, off. Okay, so we're getting really close. Uh, the control side seems to work just fine. Uh, and we even have pins labeled here. So let me get a test light and make sure we have power feed on the load side. And if we jump those two pins together, the AC clutch should turn on. So we're really close. So it's either going to be a, a relay that's 
you know the contacts are faulty inside or something. Um, maybe a blown fuse, who knows. Okay, so I have a couple adapters installed in pins 30 and 87. Test light from battery ground. If it finds a power, it'll light up. Let's see if one of these pins is hot all the time. Sure enough, it is. That must be pin 30. So this pin must go to the AC clutch compressor. Let's uh, let's jump these two, see what happens. Uh, I mean, we can even go from battery positive. And if we find the ground, if our contact is good, the test light should light up. Again, you have to trust your tools here, see? You can't trust the test light without having a good contact on your source. Uh oh. Alright, we got a little beefier test light here. It's a 2 amp dual filament. Now, so from ground, we definitely have a good power on the load side. Now let's check the control side. So let's put this on battery positive and if our lead on this pin, there's no, it's not making its way through the compressor clutch. I know my lead is good. If I touch it to something metal, test lights should light up. They do. So on that pin, no continuity to the clutch. So we need to get to the clutch um, connector and see if there's a continuity going through all the way to there. So uh, I just literally touched this connector. Look, that's it. We just have a bad connection right at the clutch. See, it's kind of loose, so I'm going to have to tighten that pin up, and it should be good to go. we got a classic case of the GM spread terminal fretting. A little, that pin's getting a little melted right there. So let me uh, try to extract those and close those up, and we should be back in business. Alrighty, so we got the connector all cleaned up. I tightened up the pins, sprayed it with deoxit. Cleaned it with a file, blew out the uh, connector on the compressor. So let's plug it in and make sure that the AC clutch works as designed. It goes that way right there. So we still have our test light. If you feed power to here, it's definitely moving. So let's pop the relay back in. Start up the car, turn on the AC, and see if everything works. All right, let's turn on the AC and look at what the pressures do. So, do normal. Here we go. High side pressure is going up to 96, 98. AC relay command is on. Pressure is rising. We'll see what the temperature is here. See if it starts cooling. Oh, it's not really blowing out of the vents here. Do max AC, here we go. If everything works, it might need a top off of refrigerant. It's not really getting cold. 106 PSI, that's, that's low. It should be 150 to 200. clutch is definitely spinning and we can feel the temperatures of these pipes so uh, the actual orifice tube is installed between the high side and the low side and there's actually this is kind of warm this is not really cold so I'm sure it's low in refrigerant we can recharge that if the owner wants and uh, that should take care of the air conditioning complaint all right so we're doing an AC recharge with the uh, AC snap-on machine um, I already put it away for the season because I thought no one else is gonna need AC for the cold but from the south I guess uh, might as well 
do the whole uh, recover and recharge. So let's do recover first. Enter. And it'll tell us exactly how much refrigerant was remaining in the system. Then we'll charge the appropriate amount of refrigerant. Right there it says 2.2 pounds or well, one kilogram. And uh, this thing should blow ice cold. Alrighty, it says recovery complete, 0 0.2 pounds, uh, yeah, almost had nothing in it, so let's uh, charge it up. Enter, and we want to do 2.2 pounds or 1.0 kilograms, here we go, okay. We'll do high or both, doesn't matter. Next, and start. I love this thing. Um, 0 0.39 kilograms. That's it, it ran out of refrigerant, I guess. So cancel. Hmm. Alright, so we actually needed to run the car to complete the charge because this thing sat in the cold shed overnight and the uh, refrigerant didn't want to charge up. So we got 0.4 plus 0.6 kilograms, so it should be happy now. Alright, excellent. Um, plus press start to equalize hoses, so we'll undo the, uh, the high side one. We'll hit start right here. Disconnect high side hose, connect low side hose, okay. And I'll just suck in the uh, refrigerant through the low side. Disconnect low side hose. Oh yeah, now that's getting nice and cold. Okay. And we'll clear the hoses out. Let's make sure we're blowing cold. Let's see here. Max. Oh yeah, we're already approaching 40 degrees. Let's look at that high side pressure. Sure, it's good. Back in business. All right, we're up to 130 psi on the high side. I mean, it's a kind of a cool day, so we're not going to see. Too high of temperatures, but it's blowing cold, so we're good to go. I think that's it for this Buick. Quick and easy, ruptured fuel pressure regulator diaphragm, bad contact on the AC clutch, easy fixes. The owner will take care of that fuel rail himself. And that's it. Keep the old cars on the road, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.